this week we have some awesome community members to talk to you about the, new, the initiatives that they're working on. Uh, tonight I'm actually going to welcome back Heather Wild. We had her as an interview guest a few episodes ago, but this time she's here to talk about a community project that she's working on called the Las Vegas Mentor Group. So tell me more about this. Uh, thanks, Susan. Um, Basically, when I was here last time, I started talking about how um, it would be really awesome if people started talking to each other about <laughs> how uh, we can all help each other in startups, how we all start to encounter the same problems. Uh, and uh, wouldn't it be great if everybody started to talk to each other? So um, what I've started is just a small group. It started on the Downtown Project LinkedIn page um, where people can sign up right now um, to start to tell each other that they're interested in becoming mentors to help startups uh, talk about other startups and the experiences that they're having. Um, and I mean, right now it's just in the very early stage, just like a startup. <laughs> but um, if you're interested in helping startups yeah, or helping to share your experiences about being in a startup with other people in startups, then uh, email at lvmentors at gmail.com. This is a great idea because I find that startups tend to only get together when they're competing with each other and pitching, I guess. So like getting them together to talk about common issues that they all face, like you said, is so important and it's something that hasn't really been addressed here. So pretty excited about this meetup. Yeah. Cool. So um, if people want to find out more, they need to go on to um, the email address that you gave as well as the um, LinkedIn downtown Las Vegas uh, group that Dylan Jorgensen started, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. Well, I look forward to that. Now, before I let you go, I am going to get you to pick out the uh, fortune of the week for the downtown community, and that's in the, the uh, format of a fortune cookie. All right. So, we bring it up. All right. Can we get our official fortune cookie handler, please? <sighs> <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> we'll find out where he where he went after this segment. <laughs> Give it up for Bob, people. <laughs> okay. Next up, we're going to be looking at this ominous piece of technology with Greg. Now, Greg, you brought this awesome drone from Skyworks Aerial Systems on the show for episode 50, and for those who did see the episode, um, there was like a 3D printed version of downtown. Godzilla came to attack downtown and this drone came and saved the day. So it was really, really awesome. So it's great to have you back on the show to actually talk about these drones. So tell me a bit about like what brings you to Vegas and uh, what you're looking to achieve. Well, I'm a, actually a UNLV graduate. Uh, so I out of mechanical engineering and uh, I built the first version of these as a senior design project, uh, but I'm also an entrepreneur. So we're just getting started as creating these as a startup. So, uh, you know, we're, we're new, we're fresh, we're out of UNLV, and uh, we're hoping to get, you know, lots of press and publicity about our new products. So. Awesome. It's good to see more people coming out of UNLV as well and staying local and wanting to grow their business here. So I'm really super happy about that. So this actually doesn't look like a lot of drones that I've seen before. Some of them are made of polystyrene or they have a completely different frame. I love this one because it's carbon fiber, which looks super sexy. But on top of that, that's kind of what you were aiming for, right? To create a better experience with drones. Yeah. Uh, this drone is, is a lot more capable of flying in indoor environments than a lot of the other drones out there there's a lot of people a lot of people are making these right now but I specifically designed this to be flown inside of structures and buildings without damaging things that are around it <laughs> so uh, one of the main big ones is people like myself who when I'm flying it around you know I don't if it gets out of control or crashes I don't want it to hurt me and give you a bad haircut <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, the old accidental haircut by drone propeller that's always yes. a good one I'm, I'm assuming too that cats are probably always chasing these things as well right? yeah if, if, uh, <laughs> you know if, if you're delivering your Amazon package with one of these drones and the cat jumps at it it'll just kind of bounce off instead of uh, being eaten up inside it, so. This is a good business opportunity. You should be approaching Amazon about this. Yes, our, yeah. our safe, safe ring technology. Uh. Well, maybe as a, an interim, Zappos can start offering this, and we'll see how it goes in our community. That's yeah. awesome. So, um, if people want to find out more about these awesome drones and like sort of when they're launching and what kind of um, businesses you want to sell these to, where they where can they go? Um, we have a Facebook group, facebook.com/skyworksaerialsystems. We also have a web, main website, which is Skyworks A. 
www.ncs.com. Uh, both of those places have a lot of information about us, our blog, our pictures. We have a lot of cool media and press that we've been getting, so you can come check us out. And we also have a Twitter, I believe, at SkyWorksAS. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing these flying around Las Vegas and seeing them kind of multiplying one at yeah. a time. Awesome. Thanks, Greg, for being on the show. Thank you. Cool. And last but not least, we have Gabe here. Gabe, we've welcomed on the show several times as well, and he's done amazing work with our downtown community, especially with the South by Southwest initiative. And yeah, I, I see you guys gearing up to go down to that soon, so I'm sure you're really busy. However, we're not actually going to be talking about that initiative this time. I hear rumors of a new little group get together happening in Las Vegas? Uh, yeah, well, it's not a rumor. It is, in fact, true. Uh, so, um, I think the first thing I want to point out is it's called Homebrew LV. And Homebrew is basically an opportunity for this community to re-engage each other individually on a more frequent basis. There's been so many developments over the past year, two years in the, in the tech community overall that we thought, you know, you get segmented with all our individual pursuits, but we wanted to keep the interaction amongst the individual smaller communities under the larger globe. Mm -hmm. And so we started Homebrew LV. Now, the one thing I want to point out is Homebrew, Homebrew LV is not something that I am uh, an organizer of. I'm a small part of it. I don't own it. Uh, basically, what happened is uh, a couple people that are concerned members of the community saw a void and thought that we weren't interacting as much as we used to. We wanted to have something that the community owned. So, uh, Pablo, who is obviously on the of Downtown course. Podcast, and Mark <laughs> Johnson uh, with Wedgies, and Adam Kramer, who works at Switch, uh, and I got together for coffee one day and said, how can we bring the community together more frequently to interact? Because we have Ruby Group and iOS Meetup and Jelly that's starting to revive. Yeah, we kind of segment into our own little silos. Yeah, sometimes. and these are, these are good developments, right? These mm -hmm. are things that show community growth, but we still think it's important to have in real life interaction. Um, this is how we stay connected to each other, both, you know, obviously in the online world, but in mm -hmm. real life, we want to stay connected and find out what's happening in the community. So this is a by, uh, we're going to do it twice a month, basically. Mm -hmm. Our first meeting is on the 18th of February. We're going to be announcing the location details next week. Um, the biggest thing that I wanted to, to point out, or the too long didn't read version, is <laughs> co-work, chat, and do amazing things. And those are the three goals of what we want to do. It, it, it's not me. If you individually want to do something, this mm -hmm. is an opportunity for the community to rally amongst each other and help each other, find out how we can get together and help each other achieve whatever it is with our startups or community initiatives. Um, again, I can't stress this enough. This is not my thing. I'm just trying to help out as another community person. This is a platform for the entire community to get together. It sounds like there may be some synergy for us to kind of work together, which is awesome. Um, and these are the kind of crossovers that we need to learn. And we think that Homebrew LV is a good opportunity to start communicating. This is really fabulous. And I'm, I'm biased because I love you and Adam and Pablo and Mark. You know, you guys <laughs> well, we are kind of my too, favorites. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, but, but I'm really excited to see where this goes, having like a self-owned, self-organized community. So yeah. where can people find out more about this? So right now you can go to homebrewlv.com or you can also go to facebook.com slash homebrewlv. That's kind of where we're gathering right now. The first meeting on the 18th is really about finding out from the community what they think we need and us as a community rallying together to build those things. So this one especially is an important meetup. Very, very time. important. Yeah, the 18th, this is an opportunity for you to chime in and start to put one foot in front of the other with respect to what we're going to build together. Awesome. Super excited about it. Great. And I've seen uh, Mark designing the logo and it's yes. like so fantastically very 80s homebrew. So I'm like so <laughs> excited about it. So yeah. yeah, I think it was important in the messaging when we're sitting around having coffee talking about it. Like yeah. home, somebody, I don't remember who brought it up, but somebody's like homebrew. And we're like, yes, <laughs> definitely homebrew. I love it. It reminds me of Super Happy Dev. Um, <laughs> what is this? Super Happy Dev House. Which right, is this is what we're talking about earlier, the, the, yeah. the, the, the developer thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's very similar to that. So that's why I'm excited. So yeah, everyone needs to get down to that. And can you please thank my awesome community guests this week? They did a, a great job of talking about their initiative. Thank you. Right on the spot there. So I'm part of a group here that we're trying to get the jelly going again. So hopefully we'll have some announcement uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been involved with the community for about three years now, and I love it. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Now I know you're a big crepe fan. You own a restaurant that does this, but we're gonna take you to the Japanese side this time. Right. Okay. So you're gonna open up the fortune cookie and you're gonna read it, but then you're gonna hand it back to me and tell it to him, whispering it, and it's gonna move and move and move. So you ever play the telephone game back in elementary school? Yeah. Okay. And then at the end, we'll find out what the original fortune was. 
Thanks, Susan. Thank you, Dylan. And can we have another round of applause for Greg, Gabe, and Heather? <laughs> So you guys are gonna love our next guest. He got his start in Chicago building a music journalism website that's called Pop Stash. For all you mustache people, I'm sure it's your number one source for music one, journalism. Yeah. He's also the co-host at the ATX web show and he moved to Austin to start this FU Weekend. We're gonna maybe find out what those uh, initials are for a little bit later here, but let's first give a big round of applause to Andy Kyle. Thank you very much for coming out. This is, this All right. is great. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm glad you dressed up. Yeah, I paint thought, on t shirt. I like I that. I couldn't find my tux. It's like those muscle shirts, you know? Like, yeah. Here, tell us about what's going on in Austin versus downtown Vegas. So, I don't have enough experience with downtown Vegas yet, but uh, I spent five years in Chicago, and when I got to Austin, they welcomed me with open arms. It was awesome. Uh, everybody asked, or they said, How can we help you? Which blew my freaking mind. Uh, I, I didn't realize that I was coming to Vegas for a, a couple weeks ago, and we were like, yeah, screw it, we'll come. Okay. Uh, and instead of sort of serendipitous, how did it come yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, just, uh, well, there's a hunting conference in town. We're working on a hunting project. Oh, good. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Get, um, get those deer, yeah. But we also, like, I... <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, whatever you're hunting, I don't know. Fish, sure. Snipes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I knew this. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, we. Uh, I, I just I came into town. I, I know a lot of people in the community. Uh, a friend runs One Million Cups uh, out of Kansas City. Okay. And it's in a bunch of other cities as well. Maybe Vegas soon. I hear. Cool. Wow. Well, 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 well. um, and I, I just kind of said, who should I know in Vegas? And they put me in touch with a handful of people. And I ended up here. <laughs> right, awesome. that's, like, it's called serendipity. We yeah, yeah, that, it's but, it's, but it's but uh, so so yeah. You guys really were just totally available and wanted to to show me around, which is fantastic. Good, I like it. Okay, so you are a co-founder for hire, is what you title yourself as. So you love you love going from the nothing stage to the something stage, and then starting over again. Tell me about <laughs> tell me about what your title means, co-founder for hire, uh, and where you got it from. So it really kind of came out of uh, I did a lot of freelancing when I was in Chicago, and I got got to Austin, and I I worked at a, an agency that did a lot of uh, early stage startup work. And I love that, it was a lot of fun, but I didn't want to have to marry an idea. I wanted to come in at kind of like the strategy side of things and help them as much as possible, and then kind of move on to the next the next stage and make sure they had the, the right employees and the, the right strategy in place to grow. But I didn't really want to have to be responsible for it. Okay, I got you. Like you just wanted to be able to kind of jump around and pursue yeah, your yeah, curiosities I, inside a company. And yeah, I like contracting. Okay, no, I think I mean I think a lot of people here are in that same boat. It's a lot of fun. So um, now let's talk about this FU weekend. This seems to be a huge thing in Austin, and I want to know where it came from, maybe what it stands for, <laughs> and. Uh, what the advantages are of it. We'll get to what it stands for. Okay. <laughs> uh, it really came out of, uh, so I, I owe my excitement about the startup scene to Startup Weekend. I don't know about the rest of you, but. Uh, startup Weekend? Uh, yeah. So I, I started there. Uh, I did it once, and I, you know, I, I got excited about my own ideas, and I never went back to Startup Weekend to really work on anything. And I, I found a lot of friends were mentoring there, and, and, uh, I got really excited about the fact that they brought in such awesome mentors. And so when I got to Austin, I asked a friend, Keith Casey, who uh, he was a dev evangelist at Twilio at the time. And I was like, what, what's Austin missing? I want to start an event. I want to be part of the community, but I don't want to overlap. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Okay. And he started talking about all the hackathons that were happening. There's tons, and everybody's starting these new ideas, and they're getting really excited, and they're building all this really cool shit. And it just dies. And it's like done. And that to me is kind of a travesty. Uh, I start a ton of different projects. I don't go to Startup Weekend because I have enough projects that I've already started. I just need to finish something. <laughs> right. So you'd rather help those things not die right off the right. bat, but get a little bit more yeah. traction. So FU Weekend really came about from that conversation. I was like, man, I, I really just want to finish something that I've started. 
I would feel so much better to finish one of the 10 projects that I'm working on than to start the 13th. Uh, yeah, I'm and, sure a lot of people could agree with that, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of like, I was really excited after that conversation and I, I got back, I was working at Handsome at the time, I got back and I talked to a few of the designers and developers there and I was like, hey, what do you guys think about this? And they're like, oh yeah, it's kind of cool. So we put together a mobile responsive site and Austin does this really awesome thing in the winter called the Austin Web Bash where all the meetups come together and they throw one big party with like an $8,000 hmm. bar tab. It's amazing. You guys should start that. Tell us more about it. How does this work? It's amazing. Like, uh, <laughs> let's see. There's like the all the developer meetups, all the designer meetups, all the entrepreneur meetups. Everybody just gets together and throws down for one night, and it's really great. Okay. So definitely do that. I'm you guys come back. To, you guys down to do a big party? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start. We'll get it there. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of that, we had like 30 people signed up by the end of the night, and uh, you know we spent way too much money. Oh, you got them, you got them drunk over. and signed them up. Yeah, like yeah, the, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, I just like, like, the, with, like the British yeah, used to do to get you into the army, right? Yeah. Okay, it's fantastic. Right, yeah. You just put the phone in front of people and you say, "What's your email?" <laughs> right. Uh, and and so that kind of really validated the idea. And I was like, "Wow, there there might actually be an event here." And you know, three months later, we, we had FU weekend. We were really flying by the seat of our pants. The, we had Josh Long come in, and uh, instead of getting him a hotel, I had him stay in, like, one of my extra bedrooms in my place, which was really awesome. But I, re I look back at that and think how unprofessional it was. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. We had, we had a blast. Um, we had yeah, good, over yeah. 60 people show up. We finished over 20 projects. One of them made uh, the number one on Hacker News for, for a day. Oh, that's great, one of yeah. Them went trending on AngelList just a couple weeks ago yeah it's cool okay so tell me about uh, I know this is this is always a tough question so it's kind of got a personal answer to it but when you talk about the Austin culture like what is it uh, if you break it down a little bit more refined that that sticks out well I think the I think there's two things the first thing that I noticed once I got there is that people don't work until 10 or 11 o'clock at night which was becoming that's when work starts in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. And when do they wake up? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Austin, Austin, Austin's great. Uh, no, just... People at six o'clock, you can basically you can send out a tweet or you know text a few friends and be like, hey, who wants to do happy hour? And you're going to probably get more people than you asked for, and it's really great. It's 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 a really fun community. Everybody's supportive. I get a lot of. Uh, in Chicago, people were really stand off, standoffish. It was very like we're competing with each other. Like either it's either you or me. Uh, and in Austin, I have sat down with direct competitors and said, "How do you do this?" And they would give me the honest answer. And okay, that's, so it's kind of the feeling of growing the pie more than stealing yeah, a slice. Yeah. Kind Every, of uh, kind of everybody yeah. rises together rather than we all rise alone. How you're paying for it and how it's like kind of sustainable? Oh, I guess would be the interesting part. Uh, yeah. So where it started, it was very like, well, we'll just see if this works and see if people come in and be excited about it. And the 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 coolest thing for me was watching all the conversations happen after a few weekends. So on Twitter, all the new friends and relationships that were made, people are still talking to this day. And now that we're having the second one, we have a ton of alumni coming back <laughs> for it. And, you know, they're flying in from San Francisco and Chicago and all over the place. It's really, really fun. Um, and uh, so where it goes from here, this is the first time that it's like really legitimate where I've like gone after a lot of sponsors and said, hey, this is what it's going to be. This is exactly what it's going to look like. Do you want in or do you want out? Uh, and we've got a really good response so far. We have uh, Spanning is one of the best company, or best startups in Austin right now. So awesome. Fun size. Okay, so you said one of the things you liked a lot about Austin was how everybody said, can they help you? So is there anything that we can do to help you? Is there any URLs? Can we follow you on Twitter? Oh, Maybe we yes. could... Uh, yeah, I, I'm always Sunday on Twitter, 1S, uh, FU Weekend, and then FUWeekend.com. Okay, you guys want to give him one of our cheers? You guys remember the lyrics, right? Because <laughs> I don't think we have the really yeah, I gotta right get ready now. for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> to the, yeah. Give my mouth into him. To our ups and downs, we gather around and sing a drinking song. To trust in those we love the most in a place where we belong. Cheers! <laughs>
Black Holiday with Holiday What TV. It's good to be here. Every day is a holiday. That's what I do on YouTube, Holiday What TV. Please subscribe. Thank you. For example, yesterday was National Hot Tea Month. And this is a holiday that our tea fairy here celebrates every day, not just what's up. That's right. Not just hot tea. She celebrates iced tea, loose leaf tea, all the teas you can think of. I need to understand. Yeah, please. Uh, all of our free tea cocktails are because of her. Please. It's exciting. I'm really excited. Okay. So please tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, who you work for. Yes. So I'm the tea fairy and I work for an amazing company called Tea Let's. And tea Let's. Yes. All right. essentially an online farmers market. Mm. So we uh, connect with independent tea farmers around the world and we help them connect directly with their consumers and we leverage technology. Um, we uh, move tea all over the world from 14 different countries to 35 different countries. Wow. And uh, we accept Bitcoin and Litecoin. We yeah. just... Bitcoin! Give it up for Bitcoin! We just uh, launched a Litecoin payment processor, one of the first in the in the world to uh, uh, accept Bitcoin in a very smooth uh, process within our shopping cart. So if you guys got some Litecoin, want to support the network, uh, come come buy some Farm Direct tea. And uh, now this might sound crazy to you. I don't make the holidays up, but February twenty eighth is National Tooth Fairy Day. It's a true story. I don't make it up. And I want some gossip. I hear you know her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We went to like middle school together. Yeah. Middle we've school. Been, we've been friends for a long time. You know. Everybody's always talking about we're in competition with each other, but really we're not. We're really great friends. Fairies, they get along? Oh, yeah. Do, I don't believe it. You really? No. H do you know many fairies? No. I, do you guys know many fairies? <laughs> Anybody? All right, so uh, February. Fe February, that's a hard word to say, but February, it's hard to say. It's hard to say February. I'm February. just saying it's hard to say that. February. I've been saying it a lot this month because there's a lot of holidays. Anyway, so February is a celebration of chocolate month. Who can guess why? It's celebration of chocolate month in February. Valentine's yeah, yeah, Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. That's right. If you love Valentine's Day or you hate it, I want to know down below. I don't mean on me. I mean in the in in the comment section on YouTube. That's why you people on you. I don't care about you live people. So I care about the YouTube people. <laughs> Anyway, so how do tea and chocolate, how they blend what's happening? Yeah, so this Valentine's Day, we're going to be super busy delivering tea all over the world. Um, and we, we collaborated with a Stroop waffle maker, Rip Ren Waffles, and doing tea and sweet pairings. So, you can taste? Yeah, so um, when you're doing pairings, if you want to be sophisticated like that, it's all about having a very balanded palate, you know? Ooh. So I got my have... chopsticks, because today is National Chopsticks Day. It's really, it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we got the cookie there. You can eat it with your chopsticks. It's not very conventional, but um, well, it's a holiday. We got to celebrate. Wow. And then you get the tea here. You can take a little whiff of this one. This mm -hmm. is a, a green tea grown mm -hmm. and processed Ooh. in in India. So you know you're celebrating um, Valentine's Day, Chocolate Month, Hot Tea Month. This is the best way to do it. And with chopsticks. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm gonna talk with my mouth full. I'm sorry, <laughs> but. Um, 2014 is International Family Farming Year. Yes. Yes. And this week, yes. <laughs> yes. And this week is National Agriculture Week. Woo! So, yeah. so I know that farmers have a lot to do with what you're doing. Oh, What's it's that all about? about the farmers. They're the yeah. ones that are making the stuff you're putting in your mouth, right? You want to connect with them, so we make all these cool trading cards mm. that has. <laughs> Farmers, you gotta collect them all. So we got a subscription. Tealet.com. Go subscribe. You can collect all of them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So now, what is your newest technology? I know you're working on some fancy stuff. I heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the Bitcoin and the Litecoin. But you know, we're also a logistics company. We're literally moving the tea around. And I'm only one tea fairy. I can't do it all. So um, Amazon uh, launched their project with uh, using drones for delivery. What? And What's now happening? we've got um, the project. What's tea happening? Systems and T-Lens. Nice.
We're scaling the tea fairy. Nice, you have your own doll. I don't know if the tooth fairy has her own doll. I'm impressed. I gotta say, let's thank our sponsor one more time, Tea Fairy. <laughs> So Chris was utterly dismayed to find out he was the end of the line. <laughs> but Chris Shepard, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, C S H P H R D. It's hard. Yeah, that's a little hard. Okay. Yeah. Did you just do the cool thing and skip all the the vowels? Vowels, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. what happened. It's hip. It's happening. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get you out. <laughs> so, catalyst. <laughs> catalyst. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I ended up passing. I was the second last person, so I passed you the fortune. Yes. So, um, I will know how much you deviated from what I told you as well. So, for for those in the audience and those watching back home and on the live stream, what is the fortune for the downtown Las Vegas tech community for this week? The phone booth was confiscated by the. Tea fairy? Yeah! <laughs> so apparently the phone booth was confiscated or some word like that by the, the, the tea fairy. So if you need to make a phone call, you gotta hit her up, right? Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. So that's the advice for this week. If you wanna make a phone call, you gotta get with the tea fairy. <laughs> <laughs> so for those <laughs> for those who are interested to know what the original fortune was, the original fortune for this week is a pleasant surprise is in store for you. <laughs> so thank you, Chris Shepherd. You passed along the message very effectively. And for those who want to uh, watch this back home, um, if you're actually in the audience, you can go to downtownpodcast.tv to watch this episode as well as many others in the past if you'd like to catch up. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Tag.